Story 1. Dad came to my apartment with toys for two young kids. I do not have any kids. I, 25F, do not have kids and have never been married. My dad, 49M, came to my apartment with gifts for two very young kids, and just exploded when I tried to ask what he was talking about. Long time lurker, first time posting. I am coming to you, the brains of Reddit that always find some angle I never considered, because my dad did something so wild yesterday and I am spinning myself in circles about it. I'm trying to settle on an answer but nothing really adds up. I'll break it down as thoroughly as I can, but my family has enough drama that it could fill 10 novels so I'll be very to the point about it. So I will reiterate, again, that I do not have any kids and am not married. I have never been married, never even moved in with a man. Here are the people I can think of that might be involved in this, somehow. I have one brother, 27M, and one sister, 22F. Brother is in a long-term relationship with a nice woman but they're both not interested in kids right now. Sister still lives at our mom's house, no kids, no long-term partner. My parents are divorced and my mom remarried, dad stayed single. He lives with my uncle, 40s? M, and uncle's wife, 40s? F, stepdad is fine, they got married after I was out of the house, sister reports that they're normal and beige together. He has no kids and has never met my dad anyways, so his family can be removed from the equation. Here's what happened. I have a shitty, low-rent apartment about 45 minutes away from my dad's house. It's on the third floor, and you have to walk into the apartment building and up flights of stairs to reach my door. Yesterday around 6 p.m. my dad knocks on my apartment door. I wasn't expecting him so when I answered I was confused but pleasantly surprised. I greeted him normally and he gave me a side hug because he had a few toy boxes in his hands. Like Fisher Price toys for really young kids, even babies. I didn't say anything about them because I had no reason to assume they were for me, like I just didn't even register them in my brain. He looked totally normal. He wasn't breathing weird, wasn't sweaty, his pupils weren't huge, nothing was off with him visually. When we hugged I didn't smell anything weird, no alcohol or smoke or anything, but my face wasn't too close to him. I said I was happy he dropped by but why is he here? He said he was in the area shopping when saw these toys, which he then held up for me proudly, and wanted to give them to the girls. I said who? And he gave me two names I didn't recognize. I remember my brain sorting through the Rolodex of everyone I've ever met in our family Terminator style and nobody matched. As I'm standing there trying to match the names to any kids I knew of, he peeks over my shoulder into the apartment and asks if the kids are here or if they're with Mike. Again, who is that? Apparently it's my husband. I must have been radiating confusion since now my dad is looking just as confused as I am, but still keeping up a good mood kind of vibe. I tell him I am not married and have no kids. At first, he insisted I did, and when I reiterated that he just kind of shook his head. At this point I'm getting really concerned. Is my dad lost? Confused? Is he having some kind of breakdown? I ask my dad if he knows where he is. He starts to get frustrated really quickly and confirms that yes, he knows where he is and who I am. I start to ask him questions that I've seen in movies like do you know what time it is? Or the year? And he just gets more and more angry. He starts shouting at me right in my face, yelling. You think this is funny? And are you trying to make me look stupid? There's bubbles of spit in the corners of his mouth. He went from 0 to 100 so fast it genuinely kind of scared me and I just retreated a bit into my apartment. When I backed away he took it as a personal offense and started screaming oh now you're scared. You're scared of me? Guess I'll just fuck off then. He storms off, literally stopping his feet like a child down the hallway. I thought about chasing him but he was so irate that I didn't think it was a smart move. Whole interaction was less than 5 minutes. I closed and locked my door and immediately start making phone calls. Called my mom uncle, and siblings. Nobody has any idea what just happened. I did ask my mom and sister if I was the crazy one and did have children I just forgot about, they confirmed I certainly didn't. Uncle says that dad left the house around 4 p.m. to run errands in my area, so that part was true. I told him what happened and he said he'd try to figure out what's going on and would call with updates. It's tomorrow morning and I haven't heard anything back. I spent all night trying to figure this out. Here are my theories. He has another kid somewhere that none of us know about and that kid is married with two kids. But if that's true, why my apartment? Did he confuse me with his other, hidden kid? He confirmed he knew where he was so lm not sure. Did he drive here on autopilot? He'd have to get out of his car and walk all the way up here though, which should have been enough time to snap out of it. The anger might have come from him realizing what he'd done and panicking, but it would have been so easy to make up a lie about what happened. He had some kind of mental breakdown. 
This was my first thought but he looked and acted so normal. He drove out here and went to a store and purchased items without issue, so he must have been in decently sound mind to do that. Maybe he was somewhere else in his mind? I considered the idea that he was maybe in the past and thought I was someone else, but again he confirmed where he was and who I was, and I didn't recognize any of the names as anyone in our family. He did this on purpose for some reason. I have no idea why he would do this. Drama? Our whole family loves to stir the pot but this is extreme, and makes him look bad which is out of character. If he were to manufacture drama, he'd want to make himself look good, so this would be a drastic switch in his dramatics. Maybe sympathy? Maybe he's going to play this up as some kind of stress breakdown? As far as I know his job doesn't squeeze him too much. He's had the same position for years and was pretty happy with it. The most he complained about was having to work overtime every once in a while. He's developing dementia. I know early onset dementia could be the cause, but he's just barely 50. Yeah he's getting older, but not that old, and he's never shown any signs of cognitive failure up until this exact point. This is a huge escalation from nothing. If anyone else has any idea what is happening here, please share. Uncle has yet to call me back and my siblings can't get through to my dad's phone. I think it's dead. I left a voicemail and texts on my uncle's line but who knows if he's seen them. I don't have any authority in his life, the only one that does is my brother and he lives in another state so it's not like he can help much. What the fuck happened to my dad? Update, two days later. TLDR, located my dad, I'm with him in the hospital. He has serious brain damage from a fall. I don't think he fell but what do I know? Hi everyone. I wanted to wait until I had more information to post an update, but a lot of people were seriously worried about my dad and I, so I wanted to let everyone know what happened. I finally found my dad. My uncle took him to the hospital the night of the incident, and was, for reasons I'll get to, ignoring our calls and texts. Anyone who bet on head injury and drugs, you're correct. You can cash out your chips at the front counter ha. Huh? There was no second family. I wish there was. My dad would just be in drama-related trouble and not medical trouble. He's got a massive concussion and serious brain damage. Doctors don't know how he managed to even drive to my apartment safely. They think he was on autopilot, since he takes that freeway nearly every day. The phantom kids are his co-workers. His brain somehow blended the details of his co-worker's life into his own. Co-worker has a daughter who is married and has two kids, and the memories of being told about the girls mashed together with memories of his own daughter. Doctor says this is pretty common with head injuries. My uncle did find my dad and take him to the hospital. He did drive out to my area and scour the place looking for my dad, and eventually found his car outside Walmart around 10 p.m. Couldn't find him outside, but did find him out behind the building, harassing an employee for a cigarette. He grabbed my dad and kind of dragged him into the car and took him to the hospital. He just decided not to update anyone because he didn't want to stress us out. I don't believe him at all. I think my uncle is responsible for what happened to my dad and was avoiding us out of guilt. After I posted here, I went to work and once I was clocked out I went to my dad slash uncle's place. Dad and uncle's cars were gone, only my aunt's was there. I went and knocked but nobody answered. People in my last post mentioned carbon monoxide poisoning and I was kind of freaking out thinking my aunt was just fucking dead inside, so I went around the house testing the doors and windows to see if I could get in. The back door was unlocked so I just let myself inside and looked around totally empty. I even checked underneath the bed since a couple people mentioned my dad could be paranoid or scared and hiding. My aunt has this giant purse and it wasn't there, which confirmed to me that she was probably with my uncle. I went back and sat in my car and started calling any hospitals and jails that came up on Google Maps. Nobody had any answers and just said he wasn't there. I even called the cops for a wellness check just to see if maybe they could call around hospitals and get a different answer, but I waited until 11th mission literally nobody came. No police, no family, nobody. I drive back home and try to get some sleep. Next day I call out of work and spend the day driving around my area trying to find my dad. Couldn't track him down so I start calling hospitals again. There's three in my area and while two of them gave me no, he's not here, sorry one of them got really nervous over the phone and said I'm not supposed to give out patient information. I got suspicious. Kept asking and she just got more and more flustered. Hung up and drove my ass over there, and saw my uncle's car in the parking lot. It was kind of late, the sun was down but I wasn't keeping track of time, so there were only like 5 cars in the visitor area and his was one of them. I do not have words to describe what I was feeling, but it was mostly just rage. Like what the fuck? Hello? He's been here the whole time? I went in and tried to get the receptionist to let me see my dad. She didn't really want to let me, and I'm not proud of it, but Elle started freaking out. I slammed my hands on the desk, screamed, 
knocked over a magazine rack. I guess my tantrum made someone go talk to my uncle and aunt since she came out to the waiting room and told the receptionist it was fine to let me through. If she didn't look so tired and sad I was going to maul her, but the look on her face made me calm down, if you can call it that. Long story short, she took me to my dad's room. He looked terrible. None of you know my dad, but he's a beast. He's 5 feet 11 inches with massive smile lines and bright, shining eyes. He's my dad so LM biased, but he's always so full of life. Laying in that hospital bed, he looked dead already. Sunken eyes, lifeless and droopy face. He looked empty. I was able to talk to him for a bit but he was totally out of it. He had to be reminded who I was several times and kept forgetting where he was and why he was here. Just like my dad, when I get upset, I get angry. I practically dragged my uncle out of the room and into the hallway for an explanation. After like 20 minutes of him making excuses and beating around the bush, another reason I think he's guilty, he told me what happened. Apparently Monday morning, my dad fell getting out of his car and cracked his head really hard against the driveway. He got up and everyone thought he was fine, so they just went inside the house as normal. After a while he had a headache so they gave him a couple prescription painkillers to ease the pain. Apparently that worked so they just let him continue his day as normal. They only got concerned when I called and told my uncle what happened. He kept being so weird and evasive that I know there's more, but I couldn't wring his stupid fucking neck in the hospital hallway so I just let it go. Here's what I think happened. I know my uncle and dad, and I know the history of this stupid family like the back of my hands. I think my dad and uncle got in a fight over something, and dad was either pushed down or hit in the head by my uncle. The altercation gets resolved somehow and they go back to normal, but my dad's head still hurts. I learned at the hospital from the doctor that there were enough painkillers in his body to numb a horse, so I suspect my aunt and uncle just kept feeding him painkillers so they wouldn't need to take my dad to the hospital and admit what they did. I pressed my aunt about the painkillers and she eventually halfway admitted that they weren't exactly allowed to have them at all, I suspect she bought them off someone else. They're likely addicted and I just didn't know. I'm almost 100% sure this is their fault. If they had taken my dad to the hospital as soon as he hit his head, he would probably be okay. I'm staying at the hospital now and my aunt and uncle have left. Doctor says to not get my hopes up about my dad. But when doctors say that, it always means he'll actually be okay right? That's how it always goes. They tell you that your family member probably won't make it but they always prove them wrong. I'm sorry, but the rest of this is just going to be venting. You know what really gets me? I could handle all this, I could understand it. My uncle and aunt have always been less than reliable. I can believe that this could come from them. The hardest part is the lack of concern from literally anyone but me. I had to blackmail my brother, drama from a year ago, to even get him to agree to fly out. My mom doesn't care. Dad's family doesn't care. My sister kind of cares but she doesn't really want to help, or even come support me in the hospital with him. I am just so shocked that I'm the only motherfucker here for my dad, and he doesn't even know who I am right now. I have to take time off work but it's not like my job gives me PTO. I'm fucked. My dad is fucked. My life is fucked. Why am I the only one dealing with this? My brother is the only one of us with time and money to help fix this and I had to threaten him just to get him to come back home. I wish I had chased my dad when he left my apartment. I was afraid of him but I'll am even more afraid now. My dad is probably going to die and I trusted the jackass who killed him with helping him. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with everyone? Why doesn't anyone give a shit about my dad? Why doesn't anyone give a shit about me? I could have been a better daughter to him. I could have visited more, called more, involved him in things more. I could have chased him when he left my apartment. I might have gotten hurt but I would rather be beaten to a pulp rather than be sitting in a hospital room with my unconscious and probably dying father. Story 2. I'm having a baby with my former husband after we divorced. This is long long long. I'm sorry, I've sort of written a novel here. I wanted to post this in a relationship advice group, but the subject matter isn't allowed. My ex-husband and I were married for 10 years, although the last two were spent in variations of separation. We've been divorced for roughly a year. We have three kids, 10, 8, 5. I'm pregnant with our fourth baby. I don't know if we'll actually be parents to four kids or not. I'm so conflicted. We are so conflicted. There was no abuse or cheating in our marriage, although he did sleep with somebody else during our separation. There are a variety of other reasons why we ultimately got divorced. After the initial feelings of failure and heartache, and there was an immense amount of heartache on my end despite being the one who filed for divorce, we were able to get along pretty well. It become platonic so quickly and it's like when we removed the romantic and married relationship from the equation things got so much better. We split time with our kids 
That's really hard for me because being mom is such a huge part of my identity that I still sometimes struggle to know what to do with myself during his time with the kids. Ultimately I'm happy that he's a loving involved father and I'm glad that if they do spend half their time with him, even if I still sometimes cry over not being with him all the time. We still do things together as a family sometimes. We sit together at our kids' activities, things like that. He has a girlfriend now. She seems nice. He met her not long after our divorce was finalized. It hurt. I cried way too much over it. He waited over six months to introduce her to our kids, which I was thankful for. My kids like her. Our youngest child was unexpectedly admitted to the hospital not long ago. He had surgery. In the grand scheme of things it was a pretty minor surgery and he's absolutely fine now, but this is my baby and he had to spend multiple nights in the hospital, so this was a big deal for me. My ex-husband was there the entire time, being a great dad, being a supportive partner to me as I worried over every little thing. We spent all those nights in the hospital together and I remembered why I married him. He was always able to be the strong, level-headed rock for me. He was this safe person who I knew would take care of everything and protect me. When we were in the hospital he told me that I'm the most important woman in his life, still. When our son was discharged, my ex-husband came back to my house. My baby was home safe, our other two children were excited to be home after staying with my husband's sister for several nights. We were all together at home like a family again. That night after our kids were in bed we had sex. I hadn't been hoping for it or planning it. It was just like as soon as the kids were tucked away in their rooms we were having this intensely passionate, needy, amazing sex that we shouldn't have been having. We went to sleep in my bed and at some point in the middle of the night we had sex again. The next morning we both decided our emotions with the whole situation with our son just got the better of us. We said we didn't regret sleeping together but that's all it was and we were just going to go back to our normal divorced lives. We wouldn't make it awkward, just move on. Then I found out I was pregnant. We didn't use a condom. I don't even have condoms in my house anymore. I'm not on birth control. I haven't been since we divorced. I haven't needed it since I haven't had the time or interest to start dating again. I really wanted to be single for a while. I know I was ovulating when we slept together, which was probably a contributing subconscious factor as to why it happened. My body sees him being a good dad to our kids and it wants another. My cycle is like clockwork and we've always conceived on the first try every time we've tried to get pregnant. Our first kid was not even a try, it was a two weeks before your wedding you find out you're pregnant and spend your honeymoon with morning sickness surprise. So now I'll am about eight weeks pregnant. I've known for about a week. I just told him this past weekend. I didn't know if I would tell him at all. I realize now that I only told him in hopes that he'd tell me what to do and figure the situation out for me. Only he didn't. I know it makes no sense to have a baby with somebody. Chose to divorce. I don't need a fourth child. Why can't, let go of this though. Update, my ex-husband and I are having a baby, November. 2, 2023. I posted about a week ago. My ex-husband and I have been divorced for about a year. We have three kids, ranging from 10 to 5 years old. We have gotten along great since the divorce, better than when we were married. It's almost like we're friends, can do things with our kids, and enjoy being around each other. About two months ago, our youngest unexpectedly ended up having surgery and spending several nights in the hospital. He's fine now. My ex-husband and I stayed together with our son the entire time he was in the hospital. When he was discharged, my ex-husband came back to my house, or former family home, at our son's request. He was just supposed to spend a few hours there, help our son get settled, then go home. However, I guess all of the emotions and being together as a family in our former shared home got the better of us and we ended up having sex twice that night. Now, I'm nine weeks pregnant. I wasn't on birth control, was on it until after our divorce was finalized, but have been intentionally remaining single for a while and not involved with men in any way, so was giving my body a break from birth control. Initially we were undecided about what to do, but as of last weekend we made the decision together to have the baby. It feels sort of crazy to me, definitely not a situation I ever imagined I'd find myself in. I already picture this baby looking just like our other kids. I guess that's why I struggled with the idea of not continuing with a pregnancy, which I know isn't really a valid reason to have a baby. This is probably the last baby I'll ever have. I'm 39 so even if I were to meet a man who I trusted enough to want to have a child with and a future with, lil be well into my 40s by then, I plan to be very picky, but I'm not even at the point of wanting to find somebody new yet. We're not getting back together, for now. We get along great when we're not married and living in the same house. We feel it'd be irresponsible to all of our children to attempt to get back together right now because of this. Chances are higher that we'll be able to co-parent this baby successfully if we live separately, 
However, we are committed to working together to do what has to be done to take care of the baby when he or she gets here. Our kids are doing so great right now and they seem very happy and secure with the current setup of our lives and homes so we want to stick with this for now. I don't know if I really understand what I'm getting myself into. Our other kids were all born into a marriage and a two-parent home. I know that sharing custody of a baby will be a lot different than the kids going back and forth between homes. I might be feeling too positive about it, but I think it could work out fine. The new baby will just see this as normal, right? Next thing to worry about will be having to explain this to everyone when we tell them. My family and friends will get over it but LM especially concerned with explaining it to our kids. I'm worried our oldest won't take the news well. She also knows what sex is and how babies are made. And for everyone concerned about his girlfriend, she's not his girlfriend anymore. Update, Mar. 6, 2024. Several people have asked me for an update on my situation. My ex-husband and I are having a baby. My other posts are on my profile. A recap is that we were married for 10 years, divorced for almost 1.5 years now, and have three kids together. We slept together twice during a stressful family time and I ended up pregnant. We've since admitted we are both still in love with each other, but have not actually declared that we're back together, mainly for the same OR kids. I last posted toward the end of January. I'm 28 weeks pregnant. We're having a little girl. As far as the pregnancy goes, it's been like a textbook pregnancy and so I feel pretty good, just more tired than I ever remember being during pregnancy before. My husband and I continue to live separately and share custody of our kids. We each have them 50% of the time. They're all aware that we're having a baby and none of them seem to be deeply confused or emotionally damaged by their divorced parents having a baby together. We explained it in an age-appropriate way. Our oldest child was more grossed out that her parents had sex than anything else, since she now understands what sex is and how babies are made. We've been involving her quite a bit and she's excited now. I even took her to one of my appointments. She's excited to have a baby sister and she understands that mom and dad love her and her siblings, that we love this new baby, and that we love each other as people and as parenting partners without actually being together as a married couple in one house. Meanwhile, my husband and I have started to attend couples counseling. We tried marriage counseling when we were separated before we divorced, but I think we were both already pretty mentally done so counseling didn't do much for us then. I think we're getting way more out of it now because we're actually invested in it and putting in a lot of effort. Sometimes I feel great after a session, and at other times I feel not so great and am reminded of reasons why we divorced. Overall, I think it's a good thing for us no matter what happens with our relationship. We've been sleeping together for the last few months. We already agreed that we won't be seeing other people at this time. I wouldn't be saying while pregnant anyway, and it's not as if Lil even have time with three kids and a newborn. We agreed that we will not open ourselves to being with other people while we are working on our relationship and before that conversation is had between us. E are carrying on just as we have been since our divorce, as far as our kids are concerned. Dad doesn't spend the night at our house. We do things together as a family sometimes, but we were doing that even before anything was rekindled between. We're not acting as a couple when we're together as a family. We're friendly with each other, but there is no holding hands, kissing, etc. Our main concern is our kids. We refuse to say we're back together. If we officially get back together, we really want to feel certain that it'd be for the long term, that we're ready to commit to that. We don't want to give our kids whiplash or do anything to make them seek insecure about our family. We would like to get to that point, but we aren't there yet. I think if my husband had his way we'd be there. He's ready to say he's there now. He'd love to move back home but he understands and agrees with my reasoning. I'd love for him to move back home too, based only on emotions. We both have things to work on, separately and together. I want to be a better spouse this time around. I thought I was being a really great wife, and I was on the surface. I also know that right now I feel so in love and I'm hopped on on hormones and pregnancy happiness. I always feel super happy, super positive, and super horny during pregnancy and I know I have to be careful with trusting anything I feel during this time because it's like LM on a 24-7 natural high, think the biggest issue right now is that he's far more. Let's throw caution to the wind, even though he agrees with all of my reasoning, and I want to be way more careful. Story 3, my best friend might be in love with my husband. Where do I go from here? Throw away because my husband stalks Reddit. Also, I know he isn't cheating on me. He's at home more often than not and I have full access to his electronics as does he to mine. Note, some identifying details have been changed to protect my privacy such as names. My husband and I have been together since we were young teenagers. We got married last year and have a six-month-old daughter together. She is the light of both our lives as we both came from broken homes and want a better life than we lived growing up. 
My best friend came a few years later. We used to live in the same neighborhood and casually began to hang out. She lives with both her parents and siblings as she is studying to get her bachelor's degree. At first, she didn't like my husband. Said that he was clingy and tried to insert himself into our friendship. WTF? She was civil to him because he was my romantic partner. For context, my husband is bipolar type 2, autism and PTSD and it causes him to be a little socially awkward and miss certain social cues and taboos. I love him regardless of it all. Over the last few years, we have been hanging out a lot more. She comes over for a few drinks, we go to movies, and even visit local attractions together. We all three have a good time, and my husband does try to make nights for just the two of us often, too. However, last year my husband and I found out we were expecting a child together in January. I was working in fell ill because at the time, I was working a fast food place. I threw up and went to the doctor. Come to find out, I was eight and a half weeks pregnant. My life changed and I had become more busy to get myself ready for motherhood. My best friend saw me less and less and we couldn't talk as much. My husband and I got married almost month and half after discovering we were going to become parents. That's when our dynamic changed. Recently I applied to school and am currently in college trying to get a law degree so I can become a paralegal and get to law school. I'm also a stay-at-home mom while doing college, too. I've been super busy. One day my husband gets a text, and it's from my best friend. She asks if they can talk, as she was upset. He took the phone call with me protesting and a few minutes later said, Sandra, fake name, we need to go get Carla, fake name. Her father is picking a fight with her. I get upset as we were watching a movie together and I had just gotten the baby down for bed. We go to her house, which is about 20 minutes away and she stays with us for a night. As I get our daughter back down to bed, Carla asks to cuddle with the two of us in our bed. I was hesitant. I have issues with claustrophobia due to a traumatic experience as a child. My husband gave the go-ahead. We settle in for the night. Carla's dad apologized and she heads back home. Once she was gone, I blew up on my husband. What he did did not only inappropriate, but was disrespectful to my boundaries. Ever since, when she has an issue with her dad, she calls my husband and vents. One day, while my in-laws were staying with us, my mill overheard a convo with my hubby and Carla. She was concerned and asked me if I was okay with it. I said, no, not really, but every time I bring it up, he gets defensive, saying that she needs help. That she is going through a hard time. Blah blah blah. It is important to note that my mill was cheated on in the past by her ex, my husband's father. We are also extremely close, and she sees me as a daughter. She hates cheaters with a passion, and my husband, who I will refer to as James, was using the same excuses his father did. She asked to speak to him privately and walked to our living room. They got into a heated match and James apologized to me. He said he didn't know that it was hurting me and causing issues in our marriage. I asked him, how would he feel if I had asked him if another man could sleep in the bed with us? He kind of deflated and tried to say, it's different. Blah blah blah. His stepfather, Mark, fake name, spoke up and said, it is the same. You're uncomfortable with it. So is she. Quit with the excuses. James respects Mark quite a lot actually. Mark raised him since he was eight and his own father was in and out of the picture. Once the dust settles, my husband truly apologized to me for his actions and said that he would do better. I kissed him and that was that. However, I wouldn't be right here if that was the end of the issues. Lately, Carla has been calling him three to eight times a day. She says it's because she is bored and has no one else to talk to. I snap. I call him out over the nonchalance about the situation, how when she calls, he answers, how it is making me feel like a third will in my marriage, etc. His response. She's just lonely. You're letting it get to you. That night I slept in the living room. I'm starting to suspect that she is trying to monopolize his time. She calls him for over an hour each time he calls, they talk, she complains about her life, etc. Almost like she is his girlfriend or something. I am starting to find this relationship troubling. It's getting to the point that it is affecting my marriage. Where do I go from here? Any advice would be appreciated. I'm tired of fighting him over this. I should have an update with a resolution in a couple days. I'm going to read everyone's responses more thoroughly. Thanks for the advice. My husband and I had a sit-down talk. His mother and stepfather weren't available. He promised me that he would explain everything in detail. I called Carla and she said that we could talk Friday when she wasn't busy with school. She had something she needed to air out. I will have an update on Friday, hopefully. I woke up to a text from Carla this morning. She actually wants to talk to me tonight, alone, as her schedule has changed we are going to have a heart-to-heart. -heart. Hopefully I will have some news. I need some time. 
I will post an update later on. My heart is hurting. Hubby and I are getting a divorce. Thank you for understanding, everybody. I quit my job after I found out I was pregnant. I became a stay-at-home mom. Believe it or not, people can have inheritance and have no bearing on job status. My STB ex-husband is a construction worker who makes good money. I only work for my own satisfaction at being able to pay for stuff. His uncle was a financially sound man who had no children. That's why my ex got the house. We were looking at getting our own house soon before he passed. Update, February 29th, 2024. This update is hard. Everything about this situation sucks and I don't know if I will be okay for some time. Baby and I are currently staying with my friend, Tanya. To start, James and I are getting a divorce. Carla is no longer a friend to me or our mutuals. The betrayal is too deep for her to be friends with our group. As most of you assumed, James and Carla are indeed having an affair. It started about three months ago and just turned physical one month ago. They were planning on just up and leaving after James served me divorce papers. They used the ruse that he was helping her through emotional issues to hide the fact. I was crushed. She wanted to clear the air before it got worse. That was when she dropped a huge bombshell. James was going to try and get me to terminate my rights to my child in order for Carla to adopt her. The reason? My borderline diagnosis a few years ago made me unfit to be a mother and he was sure that the courts would agree. She then handed me two separate stacks of paperwork and left. I am contacting a lawyer as I am writing this. I was seriously hurt. You guys were right. Carla was a snake and only told me this so she wouldn't feel guilty. However, I am not letting my soon-to-be ex-husband bully me into termination of my rights. I called him afterwards and got very heated about what was going on. James just sat there in silence. I was crying afterwards. I pleaded with him to tell me what I did wrong. For a little bit of backstory, I had a near-fatal complication with my delivery of our daughter where I bled my entire labor. I had to have two blood transfusions and haven't fully recovered from it. I was not cleared for any extraneous activity for three months, including sexual activity. James was getting unsatisfied with all my doctor's appointments and not getting the sex that he wanted. I was hurting and ended up needing another procedure to remove some placenta that didn't naturally come out. I had to have my tubes tied because if I have another child, it will kill me next time. James wanted at least two more kids and this put an end to his plans. I married a monster. We were together since we were 15 and this is how he repays me? I thought I knew him. He was acting so caring and nice to me. I am absolutely heartbroken. I'm not even sure if I'm going to update this anymore, but if I do, it'll be after the divorce settles. Thanks for all your concern. I'm going to step back and take some time to adjust. There is no chance for a healthy co-parenting situation. I'm fighting for primary custody with supervised visits. Carla will not have any access to baby, as I will ask the judge to make a clause preventing her from interacting with my daughter. Thanks for all the advice. Edit, I forgot to add that I contacted his mother and Mark this morning. They are furious that James is doing this to me. They are helping me foot the cost of a lawyer because I'm a stay-at-home mom and college student. They have kicked James out and he is now staying at our old house with Carla. He did give me the courtesy to get my stuff and didn't put up a fuss about me taking what I wanted. He told me that he will keep in contact for divorce proceedings. Story 4. My husband asked for a divorce, then changed his mind hours later. Background, we've been together for two years, married for one. We're both in our early 20s. The night of the bullshit we'd had an argument about the distribution of chores that I think triggered it. I thought it wasn't fair that I was doing the majority of the housework, on top of being a full-time student at university and having a job. He seemed to think the chore distribution was fair and that I was overreacting. We came to a solution after all the bullshit I'm about to tell you about occurred, but essentially I was feeling overwhelmed and unheard and he was feeling stressed and confused as to why I thought this was a problem. Later that night we're discussing the situation again and I express how it feels like he's not listening to me and how distant he's been lately. Then he says there's a reason for the distance and I ask him to tell me why. He says that he thinks we moved too fast, he doesn't know who he is, and he wants a divorce. He says he cares about me, but doesn't love me. And that he's been feeling this way for a while. Now, I've promised myself since years ago that I would never try to make someone stay with me if they don't want to. So, as much as this hurt, I said okay. I cried, he cried. I did ask if he wanted to try couples therapy before divorcing but he said no. We decided to sort out details in the morning, I grabbed some blankets to sleep on the couch and he went upstairs to bed. In the midst of my sitting on the couch crying and looking up apartments, what felt like hours later, I hear him get up and come to the living room. He sits down next to me and just says I fucked up so bad. 
I freeze when I hear this, because I've barely processed the reality of what just happened and I can already see where he's going next. I ask him to elaborate and he says he doesn't want a divorce, that he doesn't know why he said that and he's feeling the most regret he's ever experienced in his life. He says that he realizes he fucked up and I don't have to take him back. At this point I've experienced so much emotional whiplash that I've completely numbed out. I'd already cried all the tears I could. Now was just sitting there next to my sobbing husband and saying I'll take him back even though I'll barely process the fact that he'd wanted to divorce me. I told him I wanted couples counseling and for him to get individual therapy and he agreed. I've asked him about individual therapy in the past but he never wanted to until now. It's days later now. I've gone through all the stages of being mad at him, depressed that my marriage almost ended, insecure about myself, accepting the reality, feeling love for him, feeling numb cycling through all these emotions over and over again at random. We're searching for a couple's counselor but a lot of them have wait list right now. So in the meantime I just want to know, if anyone has been in a similar situation, does it get better? Does the trust ever come back? I feel like I can't trust him at all now. When he touches me I freak out sometimes because that's not the comforting feeling I'm used to when he touches me, it's the feeling like he's suffocating me. I want to be here for him and help him through whatever mental shit he's going through but this has been affecting my work and my school, I left my dream school for him. I can't just keep prioritizing him above everything else when he clearly doesn't do the same for me. And yet until now he was doing the same for me, he's always been so sweet buying me flowers making dinner going out of his way to make time for us. And before you scream abuse please know I've been in abusive relationships before and they felt nothing like this. He's not like those guys this is the first time he's ever done something like this. I just don't know how we can recover. Any advice about how to get through this would be appreciated. I feel trapped in my marriage and I can't tell anyone, 8 months later. 8 months ago my, 23F, husband, 25M, asked for a divorce, then changed his mind hours later. We went to couples therapy and individual therapy, though he quit his individual therapy after just a couple sessions claiming he'd look for a new therapist and never did. We've worked through a lot of our issues, we've become better partners to each other. But despite all our improvements my mind keeps going back to that moment. I find myself constantly monitoring his emotions, looking into his eyes to try to see if he's still in there or if they're vacant like they were that day. I completely shut down around his friends because I saw the text conversation he had with his best friend the day of and how they shit talked me. My husband swears his best friend doesn't hate me but I don't believe him. I live my life in constant fear that today is going to be the day he changes his mind again and leaves me. I've become obsessive about saving money in my personal account so that if he does leave he'll be okay. I find myself apologizing for everything, making myself small. I hate this version of myself. I feel like a coward. Last night we had a fight about it because I asked for reassurance and he got upset. He said he's been trying so hard but that no matter what he does it feels like it will never be good enough. And honestly, he might be right. He really has been trying so hard and has been such a good partner these past few months, but I can't get what he did out of my head. I've tried to explain so many times in so many ways how much what he did hurt me and how it's going to take time to heal. His response last night, good people make mistakes, get over it. Dot so L decided that the pain of bringing it up again and again and hurting him in the process wasn't worth it. I told him L'd stop talking about it and try to forgive him. I feel like I've just made the ultimate betrayal to myself. I stopped individual therapy a bit ago to save money, but the combination of last night plus the fact that I feel compelled to post on Reddit about this probably means I should go back. I fantasize about going back to my dream school, running away, just leaving all of this behind. I hate that I gave up my dream life for a man who maybe doesn't even want me and that I'm stuck playing the part of the good quiet wife who shuts up for the sake of protecting his image. I hate what I've become. It's hard to see a way out. Update, one year later from original post. One year ago I, 24F, made this post asking for advice on how to continue with my relationship after my, now ex, husband, 26M, betrayed my trust by telling me he wanted a divorce out of the blue and then changing his mind just a couple hours later. As stated above, he is now my ex. Those of you who said that he would repeat the same behavior again, you were right. On New Year's Day 2024 he said he wanted a divorce, packed a bag and left to a motel, then came back hours later. I'll admit, I was a wreck that day. I asked him if this was just going to be like last time and he said no. I asked him if he felt mentally okay and he said he felt fine. I got on my knees and begged this man to stay, not my proudest moment, and he looked at me with empty, vacant eyes and just left. I was in tears for a couple hours, but then I opened this app to try to distract myself and saw he had made a, now deleted please don't go looking for his account, 
Post on the divorce subreddit about how he left me and felt bad but didn't regret it. Then I went from depressed to furious. I called my landlord and told him that I was getting a divorce and needed his help in changing the locks. My landlord was very understanding and helped me do so. A few hours later I heard a knock on the door and when I opened it my ex-husband was standing there, I didn't even get a chance to tell him to leave because he immediately collapsed into my arms sobbing. The first coherent words to come out of his mouth were you're not gonna take me back are you? Reddit, I would love to say that I rejected him right then, but I didn't. Even after all of this I was still hooked into his web of manipulation. So instead I sat down with him and had a long discussion about how much he hurt me, how in the middle of working to rebuild the trust that had been broken between us he completely destroyed any progress that had been made and found a way to make that distrust even worse. I don't remember the details of what he said, but he always knew what to say to get me to feel sorry for him. The night ended with me saying I would take him back. He was smiling, saying he'd never felt so hopeful, he wrote me a love poem that night for the first time in years. Meanwhile I had never felt so broken, and I told him that after he said he felt so hopeful. He shrugged it off and said I'd feel better in the morning. I did not, in fact, feel better in the morning. During the next few days while I was trying to pick myself back up, study for finals, and continue going to work as if nothing was wrong, he went back and forth every day on whether or not he loved me, whether or not he wanted to be married to me. He said he thought he loved the idea of being a husband more than he loved me. My last straw was when I reached out to one of his childhood friends, who I had interacted with a few times and though I could trust to be honest with me, and asked him if he had ever noticed any red flags in my ex-husband's behavior in his past relationships or behavior towards women in general. This friend assured me that he had never noticed anything of the sort. I thanked him and asked if he could please not tell ex-husband I asked that since I was afraid of what he might do. When my ex-husband came home from work that day I could immediately tell he knew. He opened the front door so forcefully. He sat down on the couch next to me, told me he knew, and said in a low and almost growling tone of voice but I know you didn't mean any harm by it. I was frozen in fear and couldn't say anything, but then he grabbed my face and turned my head to look at him and his eyes looked so cold, and he said again you didn't mean any harm by it right? I nodded and forced myself to answer right. And I knew in that moment this man would kill me if I didn't find a way out of this relationship, if I didn't kill myself first with how bad my mental health was getting after dealing with him insulting and belittling me day after day. I was genuinely starting to spiral into a dark place I hadn't been to in years. The next day while he was at work I packed a bag, wrote a note telling him I'm leaving and that I want his stuff out of the house when I get back, left the note on the counter with my ring and spent the night at my mom's. It is an uncontested divorce, filing by mail, and should be finalized in April. I started the paperwork at my mom's house that first night of separation. Since ending my relationship I have gone to therapy and realized just how abusive and manipulative my ex-husband was. I also understand how broken he is, but being mentally unwell is not an excuse for abusive behavior. What he did to me was abuse and I'm not afraid to say that anymore. I have reconnected with old friends and made new ones. I have started doing things that I love again, things he never wanted me to do like wearing red lipstick or eating mint flavored things and going to concerts. I've realized I never want to be married again. I've discovered my polyamorous identity and have begun to explore this side of myself. I have plans to move out of my hated hometown that he had dragged me back to. I feel so much more joy, freedom, and self-love than I ever did when I was in a relationship with my ex-husband. I won't be using this account anymore after this, as I have no need to. But I want to thank this community and the other Reddit subs that I've participated in. If I had never made my original post I don't think I would have realized just how awfully my ex-husband treated me. Thanks to the support of hundreds of voices telling me L deserved better, I realized how true that statement was. I deserve better, and now I have better. I also want this update to be a beacon of hope to anyone who has found themselves in a similarly emotionally slash verbally abusive situation. Life is so much better when you leave. There is hope, there is light on the other side of the pain. Story 5. My wife came out to me as a lesbian and I'm shattered. We've been together for 10 years, married for 4. She was slash is the love of my life and the thought of living life without her is unbearable. Yesterday morning I woke up, noticed her sitting on the patio crying so I obviously went to go console her and figure out what was wrong. While fighting back tears, she manages to tell me that she's a lesbian and she's so so sorry, she isn't attracted to me anymore, but she also doesn't want to leave me. I've always known she was into women as well, but it was never an issue for me. We've had quite a few threesomes with different women over the years and they've all been amazing. I've even been fine with her exploring that side of herself with other women without me. I just wanted her to be happy and fulfilled. The entire day was spent either crying or talking about our now uncertain future. All the plans we had made about buying a home, travel, getting dogs and cats, retirement, went up in smoke. 
We had a fantastic sex life up until just a few days ago. We would have sex at least a few times a week and we rarely failed to get each other off. We experimented and grew with each other over the years, exploring new kinks and figuring out new ways to please one another. I told her I didn't blame her, that if she really is a lesbian it's not her fault and she hasn't really done anything wrong. But it doesn't make it hurt any less. She's my best friend. We had slash have such a wonderful, supportive relationship and we've been through so fucking much together, I can't stand the thought of losing her and starting over. She said she doesn't want to leave me, that she still wants a future with me, just without the sex. But she also understands how unfair that is to me, so she's fine with me finding a fuck buddy or two if I want it. All I really want is her though. I'm so insanely attracted to her and I make sure to tell her so every day. She's the sexiest woman in the world to me, but finding out that attraction is one-sided has obviously shattered my heart and crippled my self-esteem. I don't know what to do. I'm certain most of the comments I get will be along the lines of move on or the classic lawyer up, start hitting the gym but I don't know if I'm strong enough to do that. I'm praying she's going to wake up and realize she made a mistake, that she's just overwhelmed and confused. Deep down I know that's not how this works, but the wounds are still so fresh I'm grasping at any little straws of hope I can find. We don't have any kids, all our pets have passed away, but we did just move into a new house last week so we may be stuck together until next March at least. I just want my wife back. Update, one year later. Hola, Reddit. Long time no talk. I figured it was about time to update y'all on the roller coaster that has been the last year of my life. Allow me to start with a few apologies, sorry for the jumbled mess that was my original post, I was a mess at that time, and apologies to everyone that reached out that I didn't get back to. There were a lot of you and it became too much to continue replying with the same answers over and over. I appreciate every one of you that reached out with kind words and those that shared their similar experiences. One year ago today. I woke up and got out of bed blissfully unaware of the fact that my life was about to completely crumble around me. That morning I found my wife on our back patio, clearly in distress. So obviously I put on my best husband hat and went to figure out what the issue was. I assumed it was something work-related but I was very wrong. While fighting back tears, she manages to tell me that she's a lesbian and she's so very sorry. I'll never forget the feeling of the world closing in on me as the most intense fear, panic, confusion and grief began to set in. Initially she said she wasn't going to leave me, that we could do couples therapy and figure out a path forward together. Of course I agreed. Three days after receiving that news, I was informed by my mother that my stepdad was diagnosed with stage 4 lung cancer. Three days after that, I was told by my father that my stepmom was also diagnosed with skin cancer. Thankfully my stepmom had surgery and is cancer free. But my stepdad wasn't as fortunate. He passed away last November. He was a wonderful, funny, kind, successful and impressive man and I miss him a lot. Having all of these things hit me within a week caused me to completely spiral out of control. I refrained from going to work, I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I merely existed. I became one with my couch and distracted myself with hockey podcasts and weed. My wife did her best to be there for me but she was obviously going through her own turmoil and she retreated into her own world, physically and emotionally. For a bit of backstory, she had spent her life with crippling anxiety, and the mere thought of a tough conversation was enough to cause her to break down crying. But months prior to all this, she had begun taking anti-anxiety meds so now she was finally able to communicate to me not only that she was gay, but all the other times I had let her down. 10 years worth of moments I had been inconsiderate or insufficient as a partner. I always thought we had communicated well but apparently that was more one-sided. And I had always thought I did a wonderful job as a husband, I tried to be attentive, thoughtful, caring and compassionate. I was never abusive or cheated. We rarely fought, and when we did we always ended up talking it out like adults. I thought I was doing a great job, but I wasn't doing the things she needed out of a partner. But since she never communicated it to me. How was I to know? Hearing about all these little moments that I had let her down hurt like hell, but it also gave me a light at the end of the tunnel. A mission. Save marriage. I couldn't do anything about her being gay, but I could damn sure make up for every instance of neglect. I put together a plan to prove to her I was worth staying with. I surprised her with a picnic, got us tickets to the circus, made a reservation at a restaurant for the first time in my life and took her for her favorite kind of food. I begun learning French, she's French-Canadian, I took the lead on planning our next big vacation. I started writing her a song. I was going to give her her guitar lessons since she had expressed interest in the past. I spent every minute of every day for the next two months figuring out ways to show her just how much she meant to me. She was also able to confess that she wanted children. We had agreed early on that kids weren't on the table, but she had a change of heart. 
and for her I would have absolutely done it and I told her so numerous times. In May, she left the country for a girl's trip to the Dominican. It had been planned for at least a year. We agreed to go minimal contact during the week-long trip so she could get her head straight and really figure out what she wanted. We actually hooked up the day before she left and it was the first time in two months I felt like everything was actually going to be okay. But the day she came home, she officially ended our marriage. Now one of the toughest parts of this situation was we had just moved into a big new house with a few roommates on March 1st. Neither of us could afford to have her just move out right away. It would have screwed ourselves and our roomies over financially. We live in Vancouver and it's bloody expensive here. So we figured out a system of sharing the room. There were even times where we would still share the bed but it eventually became too painful. So I renovated the large shed in our backyard with a futon, air conditioning and a TV and basically lived in it all summer. She began dating someone so as time went on, she was gone more and more until she had basically moved out but continued to pay rent. During these months, so many people close to me went through tragedies too. One of my closest friends lost his mom to cancer. A good friend from high school lost his wife to cancer too. I had known her through work, and got to see them begin their relationship, get married and have a beautiful daughter only for it to end so unbelievably tragically. And mere weeks before my stepdad's passing. Another family member's long-time partner chose to end his life. The amount of grief I felt for myself and those close to me was unbearable. Unfathomable. So much loss in such a short period of time. Every day for months I thought about ending it all, but kept going mostly because couldn't do that to my parents. For all the bad that took place. There was actually some good. I quit my toxic but well-paying job in May due to being so overwhelmed and their lack of sympathy towards my situation. And that lead me to find an absolute dream job a few months later. Now I work as the quality control guy for a large music retailer's guitar department. I get to play, test and fix guitars every day and it's a dream come true. A few buddies and I entered a radio contest last summer and actually won it. We improvised a 30 seconds commercial, submitted it, and out of 80 plus entries, we won $10,000 in nationwide play. My ex-wife actually saw our commercial play on the big screen before a movie once. I started a stupidy channel with a good friend doing dumb reaction videos. It's not even remotely successful yet but it's a fun outlet. The Christmas prior to my wife coming out, she had bought me the Blu-ray box set of the entire Dragon Ball Z series. And somehow we managed to watch all of it. Before, during and after the split. I'm quite proud of that for us. And finally, last November I met someone really special. She was also out of a long-term marriage and they had split for pretty much the same reason. We've been officially dating since New Year's Day. She's absolutely wonderful. Beautiful, intelligent, successful and an insanely talented artist. She's inspired me to start painting and I've inspired her to take up guitar. We've been helping each other heal and enjoy life again. My ex and I are on good terms. We still care about one another and only want the best for each other. She was there when we saw my stepdad for the last time. She and my mom are still friendly, which honestly makes me really happy, and she officially moved out on March 1st of this year. It's been a wild ride. From breaking down and bawling my eyes out 10 times a day, to where I am now. With the best job I've ever had and a fun promising new relationship. I truly didn't think I'd make it through but I have. Thanks for reading y'all. Story 6, My wife crossed the only line I ever set with her. How can I forgive her? My, M27, wife, F26, cross the only line I ever set with her. How can I forgive her? My wife and I have known each other for 10 years, and got married in 2018. We have very different lifestyles, she's a very devout Mormon and I am not religious. We found some way to make it work, it was a hard road, but there are some challenges still, but we love each other very much. She has never met my biological mother. My parents were divorced long before I met her, and I broke contact with my mom after I turned 18. My mom was extremely abusive towards me growing up. She physically abused me and my sister regularly and tried to frame it on my father. She was able to manipulate a doctor to give me multiple medications growing up and she'd steal the meds. Her dirt boyfriend also tried to be abusive to me too. I cut my losses and cut all contact with my mother and her family. So did my sister. My parents, dad and stepmom, didn't approve of my wife at first because of her religion, but they get along now. When my wife asked me when she'd meet my mom, I told her she never would, she's a violent and terrible woman and she has no place in my life and I didn't want her involved in ours. I also told her not to contact anyone in my mom's family. Recently, my mom showed up at my work, which she had no knowledge of. It got ugly, and police had to be called to remove her from the property. It was such an embarrassment. When I got home, I told my wife, and she just had her, 
Oh shit look on her face. I asked what that was about, she confessed she reached out to my mom and told her where I worked because my mom wanted to make amends. My wife's beliefs are that everyone deserves forgiveness and doesn't believe something could be unforgivable. I told her that violated the one thing I told her was out of bounds and didn't even tell me until shit hit the fan. She of course has been apologetic, I told her we'd get there, but I needed to get through it. I've been sleeping in the office at home, and we've barely spoken since. We are supposed to travel to her parents for Thanksgiving, but I'm really considering staying home with the dog so I can sort myself out. I'm not sure how to get over this. Update, 4 months later. I appreciate the support of those who messaged me. As well as those curious what happened. I didn't expect this to blow up. I'll give an update in chronological order, but trigger warning. Details about childhood abuse is mentioned. The original post is the only other post on my profile get this out of the way. Mom was served with a restraining order. She can't go on my work property and I suffered no issues at work because of what happened. Leading up to Thanksgiving, my wife and I sat down to talk. I said I wasn't going to go to her parents for the holiday and I think it would be best if we had some time apart. She was upset and scared cause she has bad anxiety when she travels far alone. So her sister agreed to travel with her. But in this conversation, I asked to see the messages between her and my mom. My mom had bothered her for months with messages on Facebook asking how I was doing, if I was alive, and saying she doesn't get to hear from her son, ect. That part, is what got my wife to reply with an update on everything. She mentioned what I did at my work and named the place. Which there's only one location in our city. I knew she had been reached out to, as me, my sister and her husband all had. But I didn't know she was constantly harassing my wife like that. Which, in the time between my mom showing up in this conversation. My mom sent several messages accusing her of setting her up, keeping her son from her and those very pleasant messages. She went to her parents' place. I made burgers and hung out with the dogs on Thanksgiving. I went over to my dad's that Friday while everyone there was out doing Black Friday things. We hung up the Christmas lights and I told him what happened. Oddly, my dad didn't have much to say. He asked what I was gonna do. I asked him for a specific file he had and I told him I'd show her the file. Wife comes home after almost week, and the day after, one sit her down and we have a conversation and I pull out the file. She clearly didn't intend what happened, but she asked if I was divorcing her. I said no, but she needed to have told me what happened and or blocked her. If she had insisted on messaging my mom. I should have been involved to make a more generic message. At this point I opened the file, put it in front of her, and she went completely pale. In the file were the pictures of me the night my mom gave up custody. What happened was, we got into a fight over my grades in junior high. My mom started hitting me repeatedly, to the point where her nails had started to cut my face. At this point, I was big enough to stop her. I caught her wrist and I twisted it enough to where she stopped and ran out of the house. The police were called cause my mom said I broke her wrist, I didn't, my dad picked me up, took the photos of my bruised and cut face and my mom released custody to him. A few of these cuts left scars that are still visible on my cheek and side burn area. After explaining what she was seeing, and she looked through what was in there. I told her she needed to understand she opened the door for my mom to have done this to me again. To my mom potentially doing that to her, and if we had any kids, they'd be at risk for the same abuse. Cause my mom hasn't changed, her messages were the master manipulator going after my innocent wife. She said she didn't know it was this bad and she didn't mean that to have happened. I said we needed to go to therapy as a non-negotiable and she agreed. I caught some heat from her parents for showing her the file. Her parents had me promise them I'll protect her and not, ruin her innocent view of the world, I guess is the way to word it. She had a very slow grasp of real world things that weren't very present in the church upbringing. Although, they actually agreed she shouldn't have responded to my mom. Which was surprising. I did some solo therapy before we did our couples therapy. She was a little upset because I was distant during the holidays. Like I wasn't there. Apparently, I had some kind of repressed or undiagnosed PTSD and I began dissociating again after that happened and that was why I didn't seem like I was present. I feel like we are making progress. The therapist said my wife had this subconscious desire to fix things and make her perfect family because of some issues her parents had and some issues on both sides of her family. So that was likely why she responded without checking with me. We have stopped trying for a baby for now. Which she's devastated about presently cause one of my stepsisters announced she's pregnant and it really kind of hurt her cause she really wants to be a mom. We are spending time together again and sleeping in the same bed. She's tried really hard to make it up to me and she's been trying to read more about abuse and understanding those things. Which is hard for her. We tried to get things back to normal throughout Christmas and New Year's. Presently we are doing our therapy every two weeks and I see my therapist the weeks in between. 
Thinking back, showing her the file with those pictures may have been a step too far. Our therapist said it was probably a lot for her to take in. But I said it in our session and I said it the night of. She needed to completely understand what door she opened and what repercussions could have come from what she did and what could happen to our, theoretical, children if she opens that door again. I'm not sure if there was an alternative to showing her that file, but I think she understands what I really went through. Now, my wife will sometimes rub the scar lines on my face and just give me this strange look. She never questioned those scars before and she just looks at them like that sometimes. That's where we are at. I think things are salvageable, as the way things came out before, it seemed like she sought out my mom. But I think she just got played and just attempted to give my mom some peace of mind but unintentionally made a problem that she didn't understand. Thank you again for those who reached out and offered support before. Unnecessary to read but for context, the example my wife gave in therapy about me not being present was this. We have a tradition in the second week of December, we go out together, get breakfast and do our Christmas shopping. Usually at Target cause she likes getting a Starbucks hot chocolate. But as we'd go through, she'd look back at me and I was often just staring off in the distance or not really giving full answers and I admitted I didn't remember most of what we did that day. Which she was sad because that's one of the things about the holidays she most looks forward to is that day together.